What's going on everybody? Site 11 here. And real quick, man, this is an esoteric video on Matthew 9, 14 to 17, understanding it from an esoteric perspective, an internal perspective, because this is actually a story about something that internally goes on, but the writer, the author, Jesus, is trying to show you you through something externally, because we're so lost into our left brain, as we're about to see, that we keep externalizing and think of any, thinking of stuff as if it's as if it's outside of ourselves. But existence is inside of us as well. But we're too left brain sometimes, and we're too right brain. So this is what the story is uh, is getting ready to explain to us. And understand that when we talk about esoteric writing, you know what I mean. Jesus in the Bible. Just take it right now as it means the solar plexus, the observer, the individuality, observing its femininity which is right brain and observing its uh left brain masculinity so externalizing receiving uh energy which is feminine and then externalizing the energy which is masculine so it's, it's a story about how you need to observe these two and make an equilibrium so you can not get lost in either one not be too logical lost into the world mathematics science and all that and not be able to right brain connect with yourself um, and things like that. You don't have to use the right brain because the right brain is important. This is a story about you becoming whole as a 360. It's a story about connecting the two and not separating the two and not getting lost in a part of the brain because we're a whole being. You know what I mean? You got to become whole and not get lost into your root chakra, you know what I'm saying? Or any of that type of stuff. Real shit. Always have an equilibrium. So yeah, let's get, so let's get started without further ado. <clears throat> So remember, Jesus is just the observer. And understand this is all a theater to show you something that goes on inside of you. Then the disciples of John approached him saying, so these were representations of the thoughts, masculine, left brain. Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not? Because these people were lost into their left brain way too much. So Jesus is telling them you need to fast so you can purify yourselves, so you can see something new. You know what I'm saying? So you can get into a new perspective. Get more into your right brain. Real shit. And um, the disciples, so he's, they're asking, why do the disciples have to do what we're doing, what you're telling us to do? The disciples have already reset or renewed the brain, coming out of the left brain or the right brain, which everyone there was lost in, and always worshipping something, externalizing, externalizing life, thinking something is outside of you, not realizing that you have existence outside of you, that God can come in within you, and things of that nature. Uh, so depending on where the disciples were lost in after their fasting, which is the purification process, burning off those things that we no longer need, um, to create a more wholesome living so we don't feel like or think that, you know what I'm saying? So we just don't get lost in the world and we forget about ourselves and then start to get angry and resentful about life in the future because you need, you need to live life whole. Um, Yeah. So... Yeah, 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 yeah. And the right brain connecting emotions so that they become whole again and not fragmented in understanding. Basically becoming whole 360. And Jesus said to them, the bridegroom's attendance, bridegroom's attendance, them being the feminine feelings, right brain, okay? Um, are not able to mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them. But days are coming when the bridegroom is taken away from them and then they will fast. So... The days are coming when the bridegroom's attendance, basically the feelings, you as an observer, is you're not going to be able to hold on to that feeling that makes you comfortable with the right brain. Your false idea, your false sense of reality, your false morality about the world and existence. Because people in this world think might is right and people will take with power, pillage, rape and destroy and take lands and things of that nature, etc. Right? But... You just got to not get lost in either equilibrium, essentially. And you will be able to get a much more high understanding of life and yourself. So here Jesus is just telling them that, yo, listen, the right brain cannot become overly emotional when, they, when emotional comfort is not present. Otherwise, you will react instead of respond consciously. So he's saying that days are coming when, when, when the bridegroom is not going to be available. That emotion that makes you comfortable. Because this is the bridegroom is a representation of a right brain feeling. An emotional feeling that you hold on to about reality. 
you could be in a relationship with someone and you could lie to yourself. Put, put you know what I'm saying? Marry the, get your left brain, your objective reality to marry a false feeling. That that oh that boyfriend, that girlfriend is not cheating. They're not doing this behind my back. But you in your subconscious you know otherwise. You have to believe otherwise. But you see, you married your objective reality to the wrong right brain, to the wrong feeling. So you fell short. That's the thing. Uh, the feminine feeling get mentally lost in it. You can't be lost in the mental feeling. Uh, more uh, lost in, in being way more emotional than having an equilibrium in the left and right brain. So becoming whole. So when Jesus says fast, he's saying life will transform you. He's saying the time will come when you will have to transform. And what are you going to do? Are you going to let go of that left brain being way too objective about what's going on in front of you? The media and the news telling you, oh, we're going to save you. We got something to change your life. Oh, are you going to believe in all the fear that's being put in front of you? Is you going to accept and hold your hands up and be like, okay, look, this is the objective reality. Instead of checking with yourself, you know what I'm saying? Real shit. So life will transform you and you will have to fast, basically. That's what he said. Fast from those left brain. Fast from those right brain thoughts and feelings, etc. So again, this is Jesus explaining to them mental equilibrium. Why you can't receive new energy without cleansing and mentally detoxing to invite or create space for new creatures within yourself. Because if you hold on to the old, you cannot accept and welcome the new. You cannot fill a cup that's already full of water. That's a fact, and you can go check for yourself. <laughs> uh, but no one puts, and then the next part here says, and this is the same thing, but now he's using another symbology to show you something about yourself. So let's get into this. But no one puts a patch of unshrunken cloth on an old garment, for its patch pulls away from the garment, and the tear, and the tear becomes worse. Why put bad bandages on yourself, lies, self-deception of ignorance uh, of life, and uh, why not seek self-healing? Why not lie to yourself about what you believe about the world is objectively wrong? Why not believe that what you hold on to emotionally and makes you comfortable that you don't need? Why put bandages on that and make it as if that seems okay? That He's telling you that's not good for you. Do not deceive yourself. Always be willing to transform. Always welcome fasting. Always welcome purification. You know what I'm saying? To move towards those things that are beneficial for you. Real shit. Real shit. That's very important. Uh, nor do they put... No, uh, let's see. Nor do they put new wineskin into old wineskin. Otherwise, the wineskins will burst and the wine uh, is spilled. When the old mentality can't serve as the receiving mechanism for existence, for receiving healing, light, allowing... Uh, the self nurture into new paths and the wineskins are destroyed the mind or the container of information can't hold so you spill the blessings that god or existence is presenting you with so it's basically telling you how because you're holding on to this old mind this whole old way of looking at things and feeling about things objectively or subjectively you're not able to accept the blessings that are already present because a lot of the times that person that loves you is is there in that class that you're in. Or um, that blessing that you need to keep going on your mission, on your journey is there. But we just choose to hold on to the old instead of fasting and purifying uh, the old. So we can go into the new. So we can accept what's going on in the present and move forward to the future. People keep holding on to the past. Real shit. But they put new wineskin in. But they put new new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. So when you have a new mind, when you have cleansed yourself, and God is giving you the blessings, the information around you, and you basically this is you being able to observe reality from a whole perspective. This is what it means to be like one with God, being whole within yourself first, instead of fragmented because of the outside world. When you can do that, when you have meditated, purified yourself of the things that are holding you back that destroy your life, you can something new can come into the picture. That habit that you can that you clear out of your way, that will create a new opportunity for something to rise 
in place of that, whether it's a bad habit, whether there's someone is into crack or anything that's in, inflicting self harm, um, not propelling yourself into the future, not creating new opportunities, new paths, new experiences, things like that, that are beneficial for us, of course. Uh, but if you put information into an empty mind, it receives it better. So just like what I was saying earlier, like teaching a baby or being mentally young, always exploring new horizons, all, uh, also means how the feminine elements of self marries the masculine element of self, left and right brain, intermingling to create and see new things, having children, descendants from your new mentality that will actually lead to things and experiences that benefit you Instead, I give you death because Jesus said, I came here so that you may have life and life you may have more abundantly, abundantly if you clean your mind of the stuff that doesn't serve you. I don't care who is in front of you in your objective reality telling you that's what's right for you. Go get that job. Nah, you do what you want to do. Now you be aware and you take responsibility for what you're doing, but... Like I just explained to you, don't get lost in the objective reality or the speculative reality, which you speculate on, which you're emotionally stuck on. You know what I'm saying? Always make sense. Always get your left brain to make sense out of your feelings. Because you, when your left brain can't make sense out of your feelings, then you get into chaos. You start doing some shit that make, don't even make fucking sense. Like, you know, spending money that you don't need to be spending. Mm, being out of routine, being out of whack. You know what I'm saying? Those things. So yeah, that's the esoteric meaning, man, of it. And if you like this video, like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm going to see you guys on the next video. Love.